Lyndon Arthur is back, ready to stake a claim for a shot at world glory when he takes on Argentina's Walter Gabriel Shekiera. Part of a huge night of action on Saturday, September the 17th. It's live and free on Channel 5. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to be joined a week out from his fight by Tommy Fletcher. How are you, Tommy? I'm good, very good. Well, I'm very good, thank you, Joe. How are you, mate? Very good, thank you very much. Just uh, see 10 rounds of good tech sparring. I think you're pretty sure this is your last spar before you fight on the 24th. Yeah, this is the last spar today. You know what I mean? Done 10 rounds. Like, it was good, tasty rounds, you know. And uh, I mean, they have good quality operators for this camp. Uh, got to step up an opponent, do you know what I mean? So we've got to um, get the rounds in. But it was good, good tech spar, you know what I mean? Like, both give a good account to myself. So it's what I need before a um, tough fight, tough test that's coming up. Yeah, so uh, you sparred Chris today. I know you had Chev Clark down earlier on in the week. Any other names you've been sparring? I've sparred loads of names, you know what I mean? Like, I've had a good long camp for this. And, uh, yeah, I sparred Danazi, Chev Clark most weeks, you know what I mean? I've had him two, three times a week. And uh, you can't knock Chev's boxing ability, you know what I mean? He's a strong fighter. He comes forward and you know what you get of him. He's rough and ready. So someone tall ranging like myself, strong as well. I thought it was a good, tasty sparring. Very good, very good sparring. Let's go back to July then, the pro debut. You weren't in there long, was you? You've made an absolute knockout statement. I've literally went to get a drink or something and I blink and you miss it. I think that's what everyone says. I think the knockout went viral on all of Queensbury's uh, social media. They really pushed it. I think everyone really liked the Tommy Fletcher brand and S-Jam have pushed it. You can't have been happier with that, could you? Yeah, definitely. Do you know what I mean? It was a, um, I was fighting someone one know. I'm not saying he's an elite fighter or anything like that, but he was. Uh, he had ambitions. So, I mean, if he clipped me with a good shot, he would have stuck it on me without a doubt. But um, yeah, he knew what he was up against. So, I mean, flying over from Croatia, he knew that he was he was um, coming for a fight. But I, had, I sold the most tickets for that show, so I had a good fan base. I mean, for my debut, I walked out. I soaked up up the atmosphere and I felt the energy and um, I thought I really rose to the occasion but I planted one straight on his chin and that was at 58 seconds but this time I've got to be more calculated and get, get behind the jab so I've got, a, I've got a good step up for this fight you know what I mean? I'm mean, i not in this boxing game to uh, mess about so I've got a good team around me Mark, Jimmy, Sonny Cannon, S-Jam so I'm not here to mess about in boxing so if I can't beat boys like this then I shouldn't be boxing should I? Do you know your opponent, Nick Saturday, is um, a tough opponent? Well, yeah, it's, it's not uh, completely nailed down, but um, will Sjam and uh, Mark, they're sorting out. It's a good, it's a good opponent, do you know what I mean? So he'll come, he'll come for a fight, and I believe people know what they get of me, do you know what I mean? I'm going to get behind a jab and smack backhands on his chin, if it, and I believe he's going to go over. I believe he'll definitely go over. So it's only your second fight, but... It come to a stage if you carry on knocking people out the way you did in your first fight and it's not just that opponent we know how much power you've got Mark said it all the boys in the gym have said it you are could be the most powerful cruiserweight certainly domestically coming through so at what pace do you want to be moved if the, they keep going down like they did well I ain't got to take no silly fights I mean I'm only 20 years old and uh, I want to be boxing this game for a long time so I ain't got to take no silly fights but um if I don't knock him out or get in there and do a vicious beatdown for every single round, like I'll be calculated and I've got a good boxing IQ, but I've got to be humble. I know um, it's good. Obviously, there's good names out there for me to box, but I ain't in no rush. Do you know what I mean, but I'll just take it as it comes. But I wouldn't ever turn a fight down. But it's down to um, my team, S Jam and Mark, and that to select the right opponents for me that are suitable at the time. And I believe I'll keep winning, and then we step up, and then who knows where I'll end up. Do you think you will start pursuing titles in a few years' time at Cruiserweight, or do you think by that time it will be too hard for you to make that and move up to heavy? Yeah, honestly, I believe I'm the future of the Cruiserweight division. Like, I sound, People might think I sound silly, but I believe it. So I want to uh, clean up the Cruiserweight division, and then if I fill out, I think Mark believes I'll um, fill out into maybe a heavyweight. But who knows when I'm 25? I don't know what my body's going to do. I'm still growing. So, yeah, who, who knows? Who knows? Massive bill next week, 24th, uh, Joyce versus Parker, Amanda Serrano on the undercard. I'm pretty sure Jake Paul might be in attendance. Tyson Fury might be there with uh, Joseph Parker. 
you're going to be surrounded yourself in a huge fight week. The media attention is going to be absolutely massive. Surely this is what you need for exposure as well as the fight in doing the talking. Yeah, definitely. I'm at the start of my career. I'm a young fighter, so I need as much exposure as I can get. So I want to get up there along amongst the big names. I've got, I've got to be on shows like this. I can't be messing around on um, small hall shows and things like that. But no, no, nothing against small hall shows. But I mean, I want to be on the big stages and performing under lights with um, BT Sport, things like that. You know what I mean? I need to be on them shows, and uh, I believe I'm a credible boxer to be on there. So. Over time, I think I'll keep stepping up and building. I think I'll get up there. So I mean, I will get up there. This is the second Joe Joyce card in a row now, and obviously they know there's the link up with S Jam. Do you think that helps you? Because S Jam hopefully will be lobbying for you, being I think the only other S Jam signed fight to be signed with Frank to be on the undercard. Yeah, definitely. You know, like if Joe's boxing Adam and Shane are going to Frank card, we've got to get Tommy on there. So yeah, it's definitely good. But I want to mix it up. You know what I mean, I want to get on other big shows as well. Like obviously um, Joe Joyce, he's one of the main he's one of the main fighters for Greensbury, but. Who knows, if Fury Joshua happens, they might win the purse bids or might be on a BT show. I'd love to box on there, but if that fight happens, I know. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll box on any show. Do you know what I mean? York, Hall, cool, anywhere. Do you know what I mean? I don't mind. As long as I'm, on, I'm, as long as I'm mixing it with these boys, I don't care. If there's a fight in a ring, I'll be there. <laughs> in an ideal world, do you think you'd like to get out one more time by, before the end of the year after this one? Yeah, definitely. Like You think, what, September 24th, you got September, October, November, December. It's still a good few months. I reckon I'll get one or two more in by the end of the year, definitely. But you think um, I signed with Greensbury, I think, in March. I've had one fight July 2nd, and then uh, now September. It's been like two, two, three months apart. But I definitely think I'll get one or two more in before the end of the year. I've got to stay busy, haven't I? Because I'm, I'm a uh, young prospect, so I've got to be busy. 100% and kind of I think at the start of the year there was a lot of uncertainty with cards and the back end of the year a lot of fighters need to get out there's going to be cards pretty much every week everyone's going to be busy so there'll be plenty of opportunity for you to get on the undercards yeah definitely um, like I said I'll box on any cards I mean I'll box on any um, any show any card I'd love to be amongst it but I'd like to thank um, Mangata um, Payroll Limited for sponsoring me for this specific fight so I'd like to thank them and uh, Mark introduced me to these people, and uh, I'm sure it'll be a great journey. I just want to get your opinion on something. I know you're really close to your dad, and uh, obviously the, over the past kind of 24, 48 hours, Chris Eubank Sr. has come out and said kind of you don't want uh, Chris to fight Ben, the weight cutting is difficult, and you could be in a position in a few years' time where to cut down to cruiserweight where you're so big, it could be difficult. If your dad expressed them concerns, would you kind of listen to him, or is it all about your team? How do you see the whole Chris Eubank senior junior scenario? Well, yeah, I think anyone will listen to their mum and dad. You know what I mean, they're people that brought them up and raised them from a kid. So obviously, I'd listen to my dad and take his advice on, but. There comes a point in your career you've got to make your own decisions, but people are just saying that um, that Eubanks just listening to his dad again. But of course he, oh well, no, he's still fighting any. But people, anyone's going to listen to their parents. I know he gets a lot of stick because um, because his dad's always been involved in his career and that. But you still can't knock your parents' advice. I mean, they've only got their best interest at heart in you. But I think Eubank, if he signed up to the fight, didn't he? So he should fight. Like he shouldn't. If he thought he was going to struggle at the weight, then he shouldn't have even said he's going to make the fight, make this big, big song and dance about it if he ain't going to fight. That's my opinion, but I think the fight will go ahead still regardless. Last one, Tommy. There's an absolutely massive fight going on this weekend. It's the trilogy fight, Canelo versus Triple G. What's your opinions and got a prediction for that one? I think there's only one winner for me. I think Canelo will um, beat him, but... I know the other two fights are close and people have been double-sided with it, but I think um, Golovkin, Golovkin's getting on a bit now, isn't he? I don't know, how old is he now? He's 40 years old now. Yeah, that's what I mean, he's 40 years old. He's still a great fighter, he'd beat a lot of top names out there, but I think um, Canelo's just that bit bit younger, a bit more, um, he's got a, a bit more about him, do you know what I mean? But uh, I don't know, yeah, I think Canelo will win, but he's come off the loss with, um, what's his name? Bivol, that's it, Bivol, but I still think he'll get in there. I think that one loss won't, won't do nothing to him. I think he's going to keep coming and keep coming. I mean, smash him, that's what I think. Tommy, you're, uh, 
you're kind of modelling the old stubble today. You're going in for the, the Rocky Four look for your second fight. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've been saying. I don't know whether to shave it off, but I might leave it. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Oof. Fight week, fight week, you'll see me. It'll be all off, I reckon. I don't know. We'll find out next yeah. Saturday, 24th of September in Manchester, the undercard of Joe Joyce versus Joseph Parker. Don't miss it. Tommy Fletcher makes his second professional fight. Thanks very much for talking to IFL, and I'll speak to you again soon, hopefully after that second win. Cheers, Joe. Appreciate it, mate. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Yeah, my dad in the street against a heavyweight. I've gone back to the dad. I've punched him a few more times. Five blokes outside my front door. Can you come and help One me? hell of a fucking story, so stay tuned.